Shea Stadium in New York, the Philadelphia Phillies this afternoon take on the New York Mets. And pitching for Philadelphia this afternoon, right-hander Kevin Gross, who has a record of 0-0 with an ERA of 8.31. On the mound for the Mets, it's left-hander Sid Fernandez, who is 0-1 with an ERA of 5.56. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky, all set for the third game of this series. The Mets have won the first two. We have a beautiful day for baseball. Temperature right around 70 degrees. And on the mound for the Mets, Sid Fernandez, who last year led the league in strikeouts per nine innings, the best in the major leagues, and also he was outstanding in allowing the fewest hits in nine innings by any pitcher in the major leagues. But his first start this year, not too good. He was very wild, and that's his downfall most of the time. And his first start last Saturday, 11 days, actually eight days ago, against Kevin Gross. And when these two guys hooked up, they uh, played five hours and two minutes, and it was a 13-inning ball game and a ball game that the Phillies won. So Sid Fernandez and Kevin Gross hoping that they go a little bit longer than they did eight days ago. Well, anyway, stay with us, and we'll go down to Steve Sabrisky and his special guest. Thanks, Ralph, and hi, everybody. Well, after hitting 318 back in 1979, last year Ray Knight hit only 218. And this year, Ray has been the biggest story offensively for the Mets, hitting 421 with two homers and five RBIs so far in 86. Ray says that the big difference, as far as he's concerned, is the way in which he was able to prepare for the season during the winter. Well, Steve, physically I'm fit, really, for the first time in four years. I lost 15 pounds. I think it all starts back to the winter. I, uh, I started feeling better at the end of last season physically after going through a lot of things. And, and I made up my mind this winter that, that I was going to get in the kind of physical shape that, that I was in early in my career. The big thing, Nancy was pregnant. I didn't have to go to Florida in January and February to watch her play golf and build my, rebuilt my batting cage in Georgia and hit a lot and uh, felt my arm coming around, lifted weights for the first time in four years because I wasn't uh, recuperating from an operation. And, and everything was just positive. Went to spring training with some ideas about how I was going to approach hitting. Uh, talked to Bill Robinson and, and uh, uh, went back to the, what I was doing at the end of last year and just decided that that's the way I was going to approach hitting and, and uh, just really positive attitude has, has been the key. Well, Ray's a career 275 hitter and he's hit over 300 a couple of times during his career. If he can have another year like that in 86, what a big plus it'll be for the New York Mets. We'll be right back with the start of this final of the three-game series between the Mets and Phillies right after this for Budweiser. Baseball, it'll be Keith Hernandez at first base. We can have your attention. Mets playing Wally Backman at second base, appearing for the first time in this series. Rafael Santana will be the shortstop. Howard Johnson at third base, he too for the first time in this series. Danny Heap playing left field. Lenny Dykstra will be in center field. And Darrell Strawberry will be in right. Gary Carter, the catcher. And on the mound, Sid Fernandez. Sid with a record of no wins, no losses, one no decision. An earned run average of 8.31. He went four and a third innings in his first start, walking seven, striking out four, giving up just two hits. Sid Fernandez pitching for the Mets. And he will be working against Gary Reedus, who has batted safely in all eight games, followed by second baseman Luis Aguayo in there for the regular second baseman, Juan Samuel, who's on the DL. Rick Shu is at third base today. Mike Schmidt at first, batting fourth. There's Glenn Wilson in right field, hitting fifth. John Russell batting sixth and doing the catching. Center fielder Gary Maddox playing or batting seventh. Steve Jeltz, the switch hitting shortstop, will hit eighth, and Kevin Gross on the mound. And for all you trivia buffs, after we give the, we'll tell you about the trivia buffs after Ralph Kiner okay. gives you the umpires. Fred Brocklander behind home plate, Lee Wire at first, Dutch Renner at second, and Ed Montague will be the umpire at third. Kevin Gross worked 205.2 innings last year. And that was 61.2 innings more than his name implies. Gross. That's very true. 144 yeah. plus 61.2 <laughs> is 205.2 innings. And you did that. I saw you did that with uh, <laughs> pen and pencil right there in your paper. Never used a calculator. So Gary Reedus to lead off for Philadelphia. Reedus last year with Cincinnati. And as Tim pointed out, an eight-game hitting streak. He's two for eight in this series with a base hit in each game. And he'll be followed by Luis Saguayo and Rick Shu. Rita's hitting 306 for the year. One home run, three runs batted in. And Sid with a fastball and a strike. Rita's has had one stolen base so far this year. 
He had 48 last year for the Cincinnati Reds. Tried the curveball. One ball, one strike. Fernandez with a lifetime record of 15 wins and 16 losses. Lifetime against Philadelphia. He's 4-1. Back to the fastball, two balls, one strike. Rita hit 252 last year for Cincinnati with six home runs, 28 RBIs. He is a fly ball hitter. And he gets a fastball, two and two. And Fernandez, interestingly, a fly ball pitcher. So the odds of Gary Rita sitting a ground ball here are remote. You can bet on a fly ball. On deck batter Luis Aguayo taking his practice swings. Two and two the count. And a fly ball. It's in foul territory and it will be out of play. Ritas had more fly balls against ground balls last season than any player in the National League. He averaged about two and a half fly balls to every ground ball he hit. And as we pointed out Friday night, Wally Backman, who was batting second for the Mets today, had almost two ground balls for every fly ball hit. That's an interesting stat, and there's Wally. And actually, for Ritas, it would be much better if he hit the ball on the ground and took advantage of his running speed. <laughs> Up the middle, and there goes that stat. <laughs> so a base hit, a leadoff base hit for Ritas, a threat to steal. He's had one stolen base in this series and a total of two for the year. And it brings up Luis Aguayo. Wow, two for eight in this series, hitting 111 for the year. No home runs, no runs batted in. Ralph, that also ties Gary Ritas' career high batting streak. He had in nine consecutive games for the Cincinnati Reds in his rookie year a couple of years ago. And Fernandez does not have a good move to first. Tries it out and Ritas back easily. The Phillies have been successful in 11 consecutive stolen bases. First man that tried was thrown out and since then no one has been thrown out. There goes Ritas and the throw by Carter is in time. And that'll do it. So well, there goes the consecutive game streak of 11 straight as Ritas is thrown out by Gary Carter and some news there. And that's the first caught stealing for Gary Carter all year. Gary Ritas has his hands on his knees when he stole a good pitch to throw. High fastball and Ritas is out easily at second base. When Ritas started he had his hands on his legs and you can't start as quickly with your hands on your knees as you can with those ha hands dangling in front of you. And now the next pitch to the plate popped up in foul territory. Carter over. And he looks as it goes into the stands. It takes about 3.2 seconds to steal a base. So if you lose a fraction of a second by any additional movement or lack of start, doesn't take much to throw you out. Yeah, you got your hands on your knees. That's an added burden for you to carry when you just start start out and usually if a pitcher and a catcher note that a, a base runner has his hands on his legs usually that's a sign that he's not running but Ritas did it anyway then and the fastball is fouled on the check swing that puts a count of one and two and a Jay, top of the first inning, and Rick Shue to be the batter. Shue has yet to have a base hit and four at bats. Last year he hit 252 for the Phillies with seven home runs. And the fastball for ball one. When Shue was brought up from the minor leagues, 
That was when they moved Mike Schmidt to first base, and in this ball game for the first time this year, Schmidt moving over to first. He was brought up on May 29th. Again, talking to John Felsky last weekend in Philadelphia, and he said they've got to find out whether the shoe can play or not, because if 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 after 50 to 60 at bats they feel like he can't hit big league pitching, they'll send him out and bring somebody else up. So he's on a trial up here. And a line shot right at Howard Johnson. He short hops it, picks up the out, and that'll do it. Fine play by Howard Johnson. No runs, one hit, no one left, and the score at the end of one half inning, Philadelphia nothing, the Mets coming up. Now here's a word from New York, and for the Philadelphia Phillies, Mike Schmidt at first base, Luis Aguayo at second base, Steve Jeltz the shortstop, and Rick Shue at third. In the outfield, Gary Reedus. In left field, Gary Maddox in center field, and Glenn Wilson in right. The catcher is John Russell, and Kevin Gross the pitcher. Gross with the record of 0-1, an earned run average of 5.56. He has struck out seven, walked two in 11 innings of work, and his one loss was to the Mets. And the lineup for the Mets, Len Dykstra leading off playing center field. Wally Backman batting second. Keith Hernandez batting third. Daryl Strawberry, interestingly, in the cleanup spot. Gary Carter hitting fifth, followed by Danny Heap. And Howard Johnson, Rafael Santana, and Sid Fernandez, who hacks pretty well. He loves to hit. Mets have a good hitting pitching staff, really. And Kevin Gross, with a lifetime record of 27 and 25, to work to Len Dykstra, who brings a five-game hitting streak into this game. Dykstra... Batting 333 over the five games with eight base hits. His overall average at 296 with no home runs and two runs batted in. Thanks for a one for five in this series. So thanks for the leadoff as we see the first pitch by Kevin Gross, a fastball for a strike. Mets have a record of four and three, the Phillies three and five. Mets have scored 33, the Phillies 34, and the Phillies have hit eight home runs to the Mets three. Mets have out hit the Phillies 248 to 239. Pittsburgh Pirates are leading the National League in hitting. That? Yeah, five in a row for the Bucks. Ralph, I'd like to correct something. I said in the pregame comments that Kevin Gross and Sid Fernandez hooked up last Saturday. That I was wrong when I said that. Kevin Gross did pitch that Friday game and he did lose to the Mets as you said. And this one fouled off into the stands on the third base side. Another fine crowd here for this ball game. Yeah. Mets have averaged 37,893 so far this year. This one has to be over that. And we got a perfect April day. Here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mets drew 2,750,085. And it's popped up again. Coming strong in a foul territory as Reedus, and he runs into Steve Jeltz, and the ball drops. Could have been a serious accident right there. I was thinking the same thing. When you have Reedus running in, you see Gary Reedus taking a look at Jeltz, and Jeltz can't see Reedus. A little miscommunication right there, but Whenever you see three guys converge like that, especially guys who can run, Rick Shue, Steve Jeltz, and Gary Reedus all run well. And fortunately for the Phillies, no one was injured. Like three cars coming to an intersection uh -huh. at the same time. That's right. One and two the count to Dykstra. And again, a foul ball. Dykstra broke into the major leagues in fine fashion with two hits. His first base hit was a home run off Mario Soto. That was at Riverfront in Cincinnati, and Mets will be going to Cincinnati on the next road trip. And again, a foul ball. Interesting to see Gross stick mostly with fastballs. That's what the uh, Phillies have tried to get Kevin Gross to do. Here's your pitching matchups there. Mets are always going to be on top in that strikeout department. Dwight Gooden leads the major league in, leagues in strikeouts with 22. Ryan second to him in 18. That's the National League. Little looper in the left. Jeltz is over there. He can't get it. 
And Dankster comes up with a <laughs> base hit. How about that hit? Take him any way you can you get You better it. believe it. Curveball right there, a little flare. And Jeltz had to play Dykstra towards second base and couldn't come up with the ball. Frustrating hit as far as the Phillies are concerned, but not frustrating for that man, Lynn Dykstra. So the Mets have their first batter on base, and it will bring up Wally Backman. Backman hitting at 231 with no home runs and no RBIs. Wally hitting 273 last year with one home run, 38 RBIs. He pulls it in the hole, a base hit. Dykstra will try for third, and the throw by Wilson, a powerful throw just offline. So even though Wilson, who led the National League in assists, is in right field, he had 18 last year, Dykstra able to go first to third on the base hit by Backman. Well, it'd be a good chance for Dykstra if there were one out, but with none out, he's taking a bit more of a chance here. As you mentioned quite properly, Wilson with a strong throw, but a little offline, and good base running by Lenny Dykstra. So back-to-back -back base hits by Dykstra and Backman, and the batter will be Keith Hernandez. Well, that Wilson charges that ball in a hurry, and Lynn Dykstra got the third base in a hurry then, too. Hernandez hitting 333 this year with no home runs, two RBIs. In this series, he's had two hits and seven times up. Mets with runners at first and third. No one out in the first inning. And a strike call. Hernandez set an all-time record for game-winning RBIs with 24 last year. He's had one so far this year. Curveball for a ball, and it's one and one. When you have a runner at third base with no one out or one man out, the percentage of getting him in, the average should be 75% of the time. Of course, it's better with none out than one out because it, the more outs there are, obviously the percentages go down. Philadelphia set up for the double play attempt. And Keith goes after the breaking ball and fouls it down. You mentioned those game-winning RBIs last year. Since that stat became an official stat back in 1979, Keith Hernandez leads all major league hitters with 103 game-winning RBIs. Fellow from Baltimore doing a pretty good job, too. Eddie Murray, yes, sir. He's second to Keith. Well, what a player he is. Off to a little shaky start, but that's his history. He's a fellow who actually tries to take bad swings at balls in batting practice. I've never heard of that before. Murray came up with a grand slam home run last night, so I guess he's off that snide. <laughs> Horner went 0 for 21 before he finally got a base hit. That was yesterday. Also uh, had a home run. Now he broke in with a home run game. for uh -huh. his first hit. Mm -hmm. And a high foul ball. And it will be out of play. Johnny Ray leading the leg and hitting in the National League at 429. Jeff Leonard of San Francisco with the most home runs, four, actually tied with Parker with four. 284 at Shea and 331 in the road. Keith's the type of hitter that can really use artificial turf. Yeah. A lot it. of hard ground balls. Here at Shea, natural turf and a slow infield. 1-1 one, one pitch, doesn't come off, and a play on the runner at second. Back, back when he's still in the rundown. And the throw is to Schmidt, who makes the tag, and Dykstra stays at third, and I believe wisely tries to stay at third. He stays in scoring position, even though Backman is picked off at first. Yeah, yeah with two outs, he'd have probably scored, but we finally see this play work, and a bad base running play by Wally Backman, who was taken off all the way, but he went on the fake of Kevin Gross to third base and is caught in the rundown. So now instead of first and third and none out, you have third base and one out. Mm. Good direction at third by Bud Harrelson holding Dykstra. Yeah, there. was. 
the, all, the other alternative would be for Dykstra to get in the rundown, hope that they don't make the put out, but in this case, they keep the runner at third rather than have the runner at second. So Bud Harrelson at third base is the third base coach. And the breaking ball just misses. That puts a count at three and two. Three and two, the on deck batter for the Mets, Daryl Strawberry, batting fourth in today's lineup. Four, so Hernandez walks and that's again with runners at first and third, this time with one out. Right and it will bring up Daryl Strawberry. Daryl moved to the cleanup position to have Carter, a right hand batter, behind him. Carter batting fifth with only the second time in his Mets career. Strawberry hitting 200. Davy Johnson trying to get some better pitches for Strawberry to swing. And when you have Carter hitting behind him, then a pitcher is more inclined to give Strawberry some good pitches to hit because Gary's off to such a good start. Fine start for Carter. Strawberry has walked four times in this series. Out the deep left field. It'll score a run. Redis makes the catch. Dykstra tags and scores, and the Mets lead one to nothing. Strawberry gets his third RBI. Okay, the only other left-handed hitter that I've seen in the National League with this kind of power the other way was Willie Stargell when he first broke in. You think all the great left-handed hitters. I mean, this ball is smoked to left field. Difference was with that long curl, Darrell Strawberry does hit a lot of balls over the plate as opposed to out in front. That's why it generate that power the other way. Got also, that bat looped over his head like that. Has a long swing. Uh -huh. which takes a little more time than that short, compact swing that Carter has. Of course, when you do have that long swing, you get a lot more power with it, too. But yours, Ralph Kiner, was a shorter swing, and you still generated power. Of course, a lot of that comes out of your hand action and your weight shift. Carter takes, and it's one ball and one strike. Carter hitting 321 for the year with one home run, eight RBIs. He's hit in six consecutive ball games. Nine Bates hits over those six games, hitting 360. And the fastball, two balls, one strike. To tie something else in with Daryl Strawberry's swing, as you look at Gary's 86 average against the Phillies, he's always hit the Phillies. Well, that's one reason you pitch Daryl Strawberry inside because of that long swing. It's harder to get the bat out in front. You have to get it out farther when it's inside than when outside. Mm -hmm. Three and one to count. George Foster also with that long swing. Uh -huh. So I guess you could say to sum it up, the longer the swing, the more vulnerable you are inside. And that is almost always the case takes two fifths of a second for the ball to be released by the pitcher and get to home plate so you're not dealing with much time and a slice to right a base hit Hernandez goes to second he'll try for third the throw to third base will not be in time and Hernandez goes in safely kind of a dangerous play for Keith but he got away with it and the reason you say that is because there were two outs. You don't want to make the first or the third out at third base. Ball gets in on Carter. Now watch Wilson approach that ball. He gets to it in a hurry. Strong throw, and I mean strong throw, right there. But Keith just ahead of the throw. So once again, runners at first and third, and this time with two men out, and the batter's Danny Heat playing in left field. Danny making his first start in this series, hitting 400. He's two for five. And he fouls off the fastball. Danny hit 280 last year, was in 95 ball games, hit seven home runs, and drove in 42. Hernandez at third base, Carter at first, and they play off the bag at first. Schmidt playing first base, looking for a little more defensive room. And a ball. The count, one ball, one strike. 
Then he came to the Mets for Mike Scott. Scott going to the Houston Astros. See where Mike Scott just won his first game. He's one and two. He was 18 and eight last year for the Astros. Some year. Good curveball. One and two. He credits his advancement to the split finger fastball learned from Roger Craig, who was not his pitching coach. And who didn't throw a split finger fastball. That's right. He didn't. <laughs> Roger, the 24 game loser for the Mets back in 1962. Foul of the way. And a little known fact is Roger Craig was traded to the Cardinals after the 63 season and was a member of the World Championship t Cardinals back in 64. And he, prior to that, had played for Brooklyn. Mm hmm. Now the manager of the San Francisco Giants and they're off to a good start. And the breaking ball pulled foul. Count remains one ball two strikes. Danny Heap from San Antonio Texas. And again a foul ball. Cardinals are leading the National League leading by a game and a half over Pittsburgh and two and a half games up in the Mets Philadelphia in fourth place four games back Montreal fifth four and a half out and the Cubs are six they're five and a half behind. And another fine crowd here Che. Just did miss. Miss with a fastball two and two. Houston leading in the Western Division over San Francisco by a half game San Diego by a game and a half Atlanta by two and a half Cincinnati by two and a half and the Dodgers in last place five games out and they've lost five in a row having trouble scoring runs those Dodgers and that puts a count at three balls and two strikes so Carter will be running with a pitch two in away. John Felsky the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. Hernandez at third. Carter off and running, and this ball drilled in the corner and right. Extra bases. And it is over the wall, a home run. And Danny Heap with a three-run home run, and the Mets are leading by a score of four to nothing. Joining the Mets in 1982, the winner of 82, Danny Heap and I arrived with this ball club at the same time, and I don't think I've ever seen him hit a ball any harder than this. I can't believe this ball got out. It just kept carrying, 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 boom. I mean to tell you, that ball was a rocket. You believe that ball got out of the ballpark? Well, I called it as an extra base hit. I'm thinking double because the ball wasn't hit very high. Now, I know. That was the first thing. But I mean, even if it, I just didn't think it was going to reach the warning track. I knew it was going to be a base hit. The ball just kept carrying, carrying. But you know, that's what weightlifting will do for you. And that's what Danny Heap's been doing a lot of, that little weight, weightlifting. And you, you lift weights, and I guarantee it puts more carry on the balls you hit. Get that muscle in there, and the yes, Mets sir. leading four nothing as Howard Johnson takes the first pitch for ball one. Howard hitting 273, and the off-speed pitch is pulled foul. Howard making his first start in this series hit 242 last year with 11 home runs in 126 games. Ralph, you remember as well as I do that weightlifting used to be taboo in the major leagues. But because the ball's hit like this, more guys are popularizing that weightlifting. Certain types of weightlifting certainly do help. I lifted weights back in 1947, even though it was said to be a taboo feature of baseball. Uh-huh. Breaking ball. High repetition, low weight, similar to Henry Heck of Sports Illustrated, who's in our booth right now. <laughs> His reps are one. <laughs> <laughs> Three balls, one strike to Howard Johnson. <laughs> and it's 
hit hard by the second baseman Aguayo and the Mets continue their hitting fifth base hit in the inning as they lead four to nothing and Johnson on at first base with two men out and it will bring up Rafael Santana the eighth man to bat in this inning the next batter the shortstop number three Rafael Kevin Gross, who started the ball game with an earned run average of 5.56, working to Rafael Santana, who's hitting only 0.77. Two hits and 26 at bats. No action going in the bullpen for the Phillies. Interesting thing about this inning is that Wally Backman made the first out. Had he not made that out, Kevin Gross might be out of the ball game right now. He was caught stealing with runners at first and third. Nobody out trying to go to second. And there goes Johnson. The throw to second is offline, and Johnson has a stolen base. Howard Johnson. The one thing, speaking of Johnson, the one thing about Davey Johnson is when he gets a one distinctive characteristic of his managing is that when he gets a lead he really wants to pound it to you early in the game and that's good strategy he gets you on the run he wants to keep you on the run and Santana fouls off a fastball for strike two plus you can afford to take more chances when you're ahead that's the way Davey plays it right here he got a runner in scoring position for Santana who does not hit home run had only one last year and two in his major league career and the curveball is missed so Eight bat for the New York Mets. They score four runs and five hits. They leave one and the score at the end of one inning here at Shea Stadium. The Mets four, the Phillies nothing. Now here's a word from Garcia Vega. Mets leading four nothing. And for Philadelphia, it'll be Mike Schmidt to lead off. Mike with 40 home, 41 home runs against the Mets in his major league career. Batting 324 so far this year, two home runs and five RBIs. Mike coming up with a home run in the first day, first game of this series, off of Ron Darling. Mike overall has hit 460 home runs in his major league career, seven time home run leader. And in this series, he is three for eight. Sid Fernandez working against Mike Schmidt. And the fastball for ball one. I know who else led the National League seven times in home runs, too. Thought you weren't going to bring it up. <laughs> Ralph Kiner. Seven straight years, wasn't it? Seven consecutive years. Mike has Four. spread his out. Uh-huh. From 46 through 52, was it? Correct. Babe Ruth has led the... Major leagues, actually, nine times. Right? Well, in American League, I'm not sure what yeah. it was, the major leagues. Mm -hmm. Probably was. Yeah. Have you looked that yeah. up? Yeah. Although back in 1930, he would not have led the major leagues because Hack Wilson hit 56 home runs for the major league lead in 1930. Uh-huh. The year he drove in 190 runs. All time high. Schmidt, speaking of hacking, he just missed that 2 0 fastball, fouling it back. He's on him right now, and that's the problem with falling behind because you can look for one pitch. And that one pitch is going to be the fastball. Everybody in the ballpark knows it. Off Ron Darling, it was 3 0, and he looked for the fastball and hit it over the center field fence against the wind. And there it was right there, the fastball. Smith just a shade behind it. A good cut, but not quite out far enough in front. See him shake his head. Did the same thing after that 2-0 swing. He shakes his head again. He had it and didn't do anything yep. with it. Yep. He knows he's going to get it again, too. With a four-run lead, you just can't afford to take a chance on throwing that breaking ball 3-2. There's a fastball. It's popped up this time. Howard Johnson fighting the sun. And he makes the catch. That was a major league pop up. So one away here in the top of the second. The Mets leading 4 0. And the batter will be Glenn Wilson. Wilson hitting 200 for this year. 
No home runs, four RBIs. See, that's one thing that Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach of the Mets, is trying to get through to Sid Fernandez. Let the guys behind you. You got seven guys behind you and one in front of you that are good fielders. They're they're paid to suck those balls up. So throw strikes and you don't have to strike everybody out. Sid walked seven batters in four and a third innings against Philadelphia, which was his undoing. The Mets had a big lead in that ball game. One ball, one strike. Wilson two for seven in this series. Two and one. Interesting to note that whenever a Sid is wild to a right-handed hitter, it's always up and away. We'll talk about how to cure that problem after this pitch. And he gets the fastball down. It's fouled off. If you're a catcher and a right-handed hitter's up there, a lot of times your catcher, to cure it, can sit more inside, even inside off the plate. What that does is bring the left-hander through if he's wild up and away. Haven't really talked to Gary about that. See, he's right in the middle there. And the pitch right in the middle. It's fouled back. But whenever Sid is wild with this fastball, it's always up and away to a right-hander. So if a catcher sits in off the plate to a right-handed batter, then that will, from a common sense standpoint, bring Sid through if he's picking up the target. Two and two the count. Round ball to the shortstop. A nice Hollywood hop on that one. Six three it goes in the book. Santana over to Hernandez. And that brings up John Russell, who is now doing the catching for Philadelphia. John, an outfielder, first baseman. Batting 375, one home run, four RBIs. 0 for 3 in this series. Russell splits the catching duties with Dalton. Dalton catching in yesterday's game as Carter talks to Sid Fernandez. serious conversation might have something to do with what you're talking about. Could be. First time I ever heard that theory was from Howard Paulette back in the early 60s. And the left-hander that I was catching at the time who was wild up and away was none other than Steve Carlton in spring training. And a good off-speed pitch by Sid Fernandez for a strike. Boy, he fooled everybody in the park with that one. Howie Paulette, one of the great left-hand pitchers for control. Hit my first major league home run off Howie Is that a fact? Ooh, what a change up he had. Had a huh? great change. Had a great year in 46. The that year the, Car it. the Cardinals won. That was your first year, and that was the year the Cardinals won the pennant. Won the World Series against Boston. Later on, he was traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates. A fine gentleman. Oh, it really was. Last man all the way from Houston, Texas. 2-1 the count. He went far enough. And it's a swinging strike, two and two. What a pitching staff the Cardinals had in 46. This is a blazer right here after seeing that little lollipop curveball. Now he just blows the fastball by him. Cat Burkeen was 123 games, I think, that year, didn't he? That's right, he did. He was a great pitcher, won three in a playoff. Mort Cooper, Johnny Beasley, Ernie Wright. And strike three. So Sid gets his first strikeout, his first one, two, three inning. And at the end of one and a half innings, the Mets four and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Now here's a word from off track. The current scene in show business entertainment, Beverly Hills gossip and more. Irv brings it home here on Channel 9. And a man who is currently on the gossip scene here in New York City, <laughs> Tim McCarver for the play-by-play. -play. And a lovely day here at Shea. About 70 degrees, bit of a wind blowing, a lovely day for the Mets so far. Four to nothing lead, key hit in the first inning, a three-run homer by Danny Heap, and his, here's Sid Fernandez. Ground ball to the left side, Steve Jeltz throws him out, one away. So the top of the order, Lynn Dykstra is singled and scored the first run of the game to lead off the first. It's interesting how a single like Glenn Dykstra picked up in the first got things going for the Mets. He didn't hit hit it in the air and didn't hit it more than about 
140 feet, but it dropped in, and then the Mets came up with four big ones. All started so innocently. Lynn off to a good start, batting 321. Strike one. Dykstra, your quintessential blood and guts type player. Base hit up the middle. So Dykstra has his second straight hit. And the batter will be Wally Backman, and you can look for Dykstra to run. Well, then right here gets a fastball, hits it right up the middle, hits it sharply right by Aguayo, the second baseman. And with one out, Dykstra at first with Backman coming up. You know, there's only one thing better than a Mets win, and that's a celebration with that win. A nice cold Budweiser. Mets fans, this Bud's for you. One away, Dykstra at first. Not running, and the fastball is high. Backman handles the bat about as well as any Met, with the possible exception of Keith Hernandez. That's one of the prime ingredients in that hit and run situation. If you have a guy who strikes out a lot, doesn't make a lot of contact, you don't send the runner. And a bunt, and it's foul, one and one. And as you pointed out, Tim, he also led the National League in hitting ground balls in ratio to fly balls. Ground balls are what you're looking for with that hit and run. So the formula is there. Good speed at first. Backman a contact hitter. Dave Stewart up for the Phillies. Smoke Stewart. Smoke Stewart. Originally with the Dodgers. Went over to Texas in the Rick Honeycutt trade. There goes Dykstra. Curveball is inside. Dykstra is safe. Fourth stolen base of the year for Lynn Dykstra. And he got a good pitch to run on then. Got a good pitch to run on and he had a big jump. Now he's in motion right now. And Russell had no chance at all to get him. Dykstra leads the club in stolen bases with that four. Look at this good movement, acceleration down to second, the belly slide, and the late tag. He's there with one out, two and one. And Wally taps it foul, so it's two and two. Wally hit it. Wally hit 273 last year. And he batted 324 from the left side. Shortcoming as a right-handed hitter. That's one of the reasons the Mets went out to get Tim Tuffle from the Twins this past winter. 100 points less from mm -hmm. the bad side as far as he's concerned. And the count is full. Keith Hernandez on deck. Tim McCarver along with Ralph Kiner and Steve Zabriskie. All the action right here on WOR. I'll tell you about the rest of the week's action on WOR after this pitch. Ground ball and Schmidt makes the play. Dykstra moving to third base. And with two out, the batter will be Keith Hernandez. Two games that were not scheduled to be broadcast on WOR tomorrow night at 7.35 and Tuesday night because of the rain, the rainouts this past week. We rescheduled schedule the games for tomorrow night on the air at 7.30 and Tuesday night, 7.30. Hernandez walked and scored a run on Heap's three-run homer in the first inning. One and zero. Keith wants that ball checked out. A good thing to do when you're a hitter. Those pitchers are known at times to put some foreign things on that baseball. <laughs> no, they don't do that. <laughs> nah. Now look, I was a catcher. I know they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I believe you, too. <laughs> you believe that, you believe rocks <laughs> grow. <laughs> Two and oh. <laughs> when Preacher Rowe was pitching for the Dodgers, it was Billy Cox who used to load up his spitball. Another change is high, three and out. Third baseman. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, that had to look rather strange for him to throw the ball to the third baseman every Nobody time. Nobody figured it out. <laughs> now, he'd loaded up some of the time. The rest of the time, it might have been Campanella. 
Well, Hernandez is on there. Second walk in a row given to Keith and the batter, Daryl Strawberry, at a sack fly in the first inning. That's one of the erroneous things about the game-winning RBI. As it stands now, Strawberry would be credited with it, but Danny Heap hit the three-run homer to give the Mets a four-run lead instead of a one-run lead. Good cut, no damage, 0-1. Larry Anderson's now joined Dave Stewart in the bullpen. Shaky outing for Kevin Gross. Gross, a 15 game winner last year. 15 and 13. He led the Phillies in wins last year. He also, during one stretch, pitched two consecutive shutouts. And another strike, 0 and 2. Always nice to get off to a good start, whether you're a pitcher or a batter. Rube Marquard won his first 19 decisions Man. in one year. 1905, I believe. Curveball, good play by John Russell. <laughs> That's a pretty good start. Man, isn't it? 19 in a row. That's an all-time record. All-time record for consecutive wins, and right from the start of the season. That was a good play, wasn't it? Good play by Russell, who has converted from the outfield in first base to behind the plate. He did catch when he was a young ball player. Schmidt behind Hernandez at first. First and third, two out. Curve ball is ripped foul, and I mean foul. You hit that one right over his right wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Hernandez at first, Dykstra at third. Mets lead four to nothing. Fastball misses two and two. Of course, if Kevin Gross doesn't make it as a pitcher, he can make it painting canvases, can he? Uh, he's a professional artist. He sold quite a few art pieces. Quite a bit of money, I understand. Breaking ball fouled away. Kurt Flood, also a fine artist. Uh-huh. He was smart, though. He used to do a lot of paintings of the owner of the ball club to <laughs> give them to him. August A. Bush, the owner of the St. Louis Cardinals. Speaking of those Cardinals, who are 7-1 and one and one and a half games in first place, they play up in Montreal this afternoon. And the Mets go into St. Louis for four big games this weekend. Another one fouled away. Night games Thursday and Friday of this week, and then Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. How about the pitcher walking with the bases loaded to oh. get the game winning RBI in that Montreal game the Cardinals won? Bases full. His first made his first professional at bat. Conroy. Tim Conroy. He's the one who came over from the Oakland A's in the Joaquin Andujar trade. Came over with Mike Heath. Walked in the 17th inning, two out, and the bases loaded in his first professional at bats. You think they were pitching around him? <laughs> <laughs> so good at bat by Daryl Strawberry. Three and two. Hernandez at first. Dykstra at third. Mets up four to nothing, trying to put this game out of reach. Yeomans, who went to school with Dwight Gooden, was a man who walked him. <laughs> Ground ball hits sharply to Aguayo to throw him out. No runs a hit and two left here in the second inning. After two, the Mets four and the Phillies nothing. We'll go to the third after this word from Budweiser. Well, top of the third inning. What a lovely face enjoying the ball game. Mets won two in a row, lost three in a row. Now they have one two in a row again they're four and three and ahead in this game four to nothing some of the young you. Met fans out here at Shea soaking up the sunshine and the nice weather beautiful spring afternoon for the Phillies here in the third inning Sid Fernandez will face Gary Maddox Steve Jeltz and Kevin Gross Fernandez has allowed only one hit. That was a leadoff single by Gary Reedus, and he was erased trying to steal second base. 
Since then, he's retired five in a row. Maddox, three for six. Eight gold gloves. And only, twice. Only Roberto Clemente and Willie Mays have won more gold gloves as outfielders. Twice he was runner-up for the batting championship. And he takes a strike, 0-1. Came over to the Phillies back in 1975 for Willie Montanez. And it's one and one. I like Harry Callis's line about Gary Maddox. He said he used to be depressed and miserable, and he's turned his life around. Now he's <laughs> miserable and depressed. <laughs> and it's two and one to Gary. He has raised an awful lot of money for charity in the Philadelphia area. For the Child Guidance Clinic there in Philadelphia. Quite a humanitarian. And he pops this one up to the right side in foul territory. Hernandez makes the catch. Six in a row retired by Fernandez. And the batter, Steve Jeltz. And we're starting to see the hitters being fooled by the deception of Fernandez with his delivery. There, that swing way behind. Sid has a very unusual delivery. The ball sneaks up on you. And high kick, it's kind of tough to tell when that, if the pitch is a fastball or curve until it's too late. Quit while you're ahead, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So Steve Jeltz, normally a right-handed hitter, converted himself, if you can do that, to switch hitting this winter. Natural right-handed hitter. Ooh, little breezer inside, one and one. He was doing well until he ran into Dwight Gooden yesterday. Was on base once yesterday, but took the collar 0 for 3. And the 1 1 pitch is low, so it's 2 and 1 to Steve Jeltz. Good and struck him out twice, both on fastballs while he was batting left handed. Couldn't get the head of the bat out in front of the ball. He's got a lot of company against Gooden, though, in that department. 2 and 2. 10 strikeouts for Dwight yesterday. Leads the National League with 22 strike strikeouts. Ryan second with 18. Bob Wells third with 17. And the fastball is high. We mentioned the Dodgers earlier. They came up with four runs against those Braves. They have lost five in a row and are in last place in the National League West. Atlanta hitting in the bottom of the first inning. 3-2 pitch to Steve Jeltz. Popped up in the infield. Backman backed up. Now he comes forward. And he makes the catch. Glasses down. That sun is very bright. I guess the sun is always bright. <laughs> Whether it's Somewhere. out or not. <laughs> Somewhere it's shining brightly. <laughs> there is no joy in Mudville. Huh? <laughs> Kevin Gross, a good hitting pitcher. He was used as a pinch hitter last year. In a game against Cincinnati. Seven in a row retired by Fernandez. Four to nothing. New York comfortably on top for now. And it's one and one. Ground ball to short. Santana on a short hop. Eight in a row retired by Sid Fernandez. After two and a half, it's four to nothing. New York. Go to the middle of the third after this word from Purolator. Wristband day. Those snazzy wristbands. And Ralph, if you're like most Mets fans, you never seem to get enough news about your team. But now you can by picking up the latest copy of New York Mets Inside Pitch, the official newspaper of the Mets. You can get Mets Inside Pitch at your local newsstand or by subscribing through this toll-free number during business hours. And there's your number, 800-421-7751. 
And this is what you'll get if you subscribe now. 12 issues a year, inside information on the ball club, complete minor league reports, got a Mets trivia page, viewpoints from great writers like Red Foley, Dan Castellano, and Jack Lang, clubhouse clippings, and much, much more. It's the ultimate publication for the ultimate Mets fans, and it's only $14.95. Here's Gary Carter to lead off the bottom of the third. Four to nothing, New York on top. Fastball is high. Gary singled. He has now batted safely in seven straight games. Scored a run in front of Danny Heap's three-run home run in the first. Two and up. Well, those Buckos in Chicago, they've won five in a row, Pittsburgh has. They'll be in tomorrow night and Tuesday, and they scored one in the top of the first. Carter lifts one to center field. This ball is caught, one out. Pretty sure with those sure hands of Maddox in center. And Tommy Ryan to the left of your screen, the sales manager at WOR. Well, here's today's hitting hero so far, Danny Heap with a three-run homer down the right field line, and I mean a BB in the first inning. Baby, what a BB. One and oh to Danny Heap. Two and oh. Ryan was seven home runs last year, and a couple of years ago. Of course, he started 70 games last season when Daryl Strawberry got hurt. He got back in the act. He had four pinch hit home runs. That was back in 1983. That was also the year Rusty Staub had 25 pinch hit RBIs. 24 pinch hits, one behind Jerry Lynch. He tied Jerry Lynch for pinch hit RBIs in the season with 25. Three and one to Danny Heap. Ended up with 100 pinch hits in his major league career. And he had pinch hits in eight consecutive games to tie a record set by Dave Philly. Fly ball left field. Reedus on the move. It wasn't pretty, but he made the catch. Two out. Well, he barely keeps the ball in his glove with his catch as he overruns it. Hits the heel of his glove, bounces into the trap, and he puts the other hand around it. So Reedus gets the put out. And Howard Johnson, who single his first time up, is the batter. Howard also with a stolen base. In the first. Sometimes when an outfielder is running that far for a ball, Ralph, and you would know better than I, one and oh, get to running on your heels, and that ball starts bouncing around. It looks like there are about 50 baseballs coming down, doesn't it? Like a community <laughs> sing. Watch the bouncing ball. It just goes up and down. Whatever happened to those in the movies? I remember that. Sing-alongs, huh? Yeah, Saturday double feature. Go down and see the follow the bouncing ball. Well, your version of it in some various spots that I have been <laughs> isn't bad. I love piano bars, pal. Get into a little Cole Porter and Ira our, our Gershwin. 3-0 and to Johnson. He might have the green light here. Two out, nobody on. But he was taken all the way, so he walked. Some players don't like to hit 3-0, strangely. They find they're too anxious. It does take an experienced hitter to handle that 3-0 pitch because it's really got to be right in that slot. It's like a free ride. All you got to do is look for one pitch, look for it in one spot. If it's not there, don't swing. Santana struck out his first time up, and Rafi is now... Oh, for his last 17. Four to nothing. New York on top. Six hits for the Mets, one for the Phillies. Pop fly right side. Aguayo there. And he makes the catch to close out the Mets here in the third inning. They did strand a runner, but they lead four to nothing after three. Now here's a word from Burke. 
Well, we're going now to the top of the fourth. The Mets on four runs in the first inning, leading by a score of four nothing. The winning pitcher yesterday, Dwight Gooden, right there in your picture. Dwight now with a record of two and zero. Oh. And as we go to the top of the fourth inning, coming in for the play-by-play, -play, Steve Sabrisky. Thanks a lot, Ralph. And hi, everybody. It'll be the top of the order here in the fourth for Philadelphia. Leadoff batter Gary Reedus, as Sid Fernandez has faced the minimum. He did allow a base hit to Reedus to lead off the ball game, but then Gary was caught stealing as another Gary Carter threw him out. Only the second time in 13 chances that the Phillies have been unsuccessful on steal attempts this year. And there's Bob Ojeda. Bob scheduled to go against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That would be on Tuesday night. Breaking ball misses ball one. Going to have trouble with Ojeda because I'm already starting to get mail about how we pronounce his name. <laughs> Spanish wise we do not pronounce it correctly. That's but right. he is not from Spain. He's not from Mexico. He's not from any Spanish speaking country. He is from California. And he wants it pronounced Ojeda. And that's the way we should pronounce names is the way that the person prefers. One and one to Reedus, and he goes after that high cheese, and it's strike two. Reedus is three for nine in this series. He has a home run against the Mets this year. And he has hit now with that single his first time up in nine straight games, which ties his career high. Again, he goes after the high fastball, still one and two. Top of the fourth with the Mets leading four to nothing. Another foul back. You know, a couple of days ago on the 18th, was the anniversary of the longest game ever played. Took 66 days to play it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Ojeda was in that ball game. A winning pitcher. 33 innings. It was suspended after the 32nd inning at 407 Easter morning and resumed 66 days later. That 4.07 a.m. had us beat with that game in Atlanta last year. Ended at 3.50, wasn't it? 3.55. 3.55. That's against Atlanta. They won it. And the game was over at 3.55. That was the latest any game has ever ended in the National League. That was a two-dayer. July 4th and July 5th. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well hit. Is it fair or foul? Foul ball. Well, the count remains two and two. The total game time of that game we were talking about in the minor leagues, Paul Tuckett was playing in that ball game against Rochester was an awful long time. Eight hours and 25 minutes. Mets played a ball game that was seven hours, 23 minutes, the longest ever played in the National League. Sid Fernandez picks up his second strikeout to lead off the fourth inning. Taking out the scoreboard, it's Pittsburgh one, the Cubs nothing, bottom of the first, Cardinals nothing, nothing against the Expos as they bat in the first. Dodgers four, Braves two, top of the second. Astros trailing the Reds one, nothing at the top of the second. And of course, the Padres and Giants later. Here's Luis Aguayo who lined out to Danny Heap in left field his first time up. Aguayo one for six in the series, takes high, ball one. Aguayo playing. For the injured Juan Samuel. As you see, he hit a home run off Sid last year. Pops this one up in a short right field, however. Backman is there, and there are two out. So Sid now has retired 10 in a row. And here's Rick Shue, who grounded the third. He hit a hot shot that Howard Johnson made a fine play on to end the first inning.
Well, your old ball club, Ralph, off to a great start. The resurgent Pirates will be in here tomorrow night and Tuesday night. A lot of young ball players and ready to play. Pretty soon they won't be saying, who are those guys anymore? Shue playing third today with Schmidt moving over to first as John Felsky gets all the right-handers in he can get. One and one. Well, last year, the Phillies, as you look at the it makes you proto mouth water, it does. It's not gonna have a hot dog at the ballpark. Prototypical ballpark shot there. Two and one now. Last year, the Phillies were trying to make this move with Shue at third and Schmidt at first a permanent thing, but it didn't work out for a variety of reasons. <laughs> Foul tips, but held by Carter, and the count now two and two. Shue did not perform up to expectations either at the bat or in the field, and Mike Schmidt much prefers third base to first. Shoe couldn't fill Schmidt's shoes. <laughs> That's a good tongue twister. Say that three times quickly. <laughs> three and two. Two out, nobody on. I always wondered how Ed Sullivan would have handled Eric Shaw and Rick Shue. <laughs> he might have been ready for the funny farm by the time he tried to sort it out. Put that in your hat. <laughs> Sky deep to left. Heap on the track. And the inning is over. Sid Fernandez has retired 11 in a row. And the Mets lead it 4 to nothing in the middle of the fourth. We're back after this from Budweiser. Host the Pittsburgh Pirates at Shea and immediately following a special edition of News 9 Primetime with the latest in news, weather, and sports. Sid Fernandez will lead off the bottom of the fourth inning for New York. The Mets out in front of the Phillies four to nothing with four runs in the first inning. Three of them on a home run by Danny Heap. Sid grounded to short his first time up. All one. We are talking earlier about Met pitchers as hitters and Sid Fernandez another one of the good hitters for the Met pitching staff, good in the course number one, Darling, Sid Fernandez, Aguayo, shouldn't say Aguayo, Aguilar. Aguilar used as a pinch hitter the other day. The Mets, in fact, as a staff, led the National League in pitchers' batting average last year. When you think of pitchers being good hitters, you think of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, they've had some, haven't they? They don't have all those guys anymore, though. But Roden can hit. Robinson. Don Robinson's a good hitter. Four is low on four straight pitches. Fernandez walks to open the fourth inning. That is the fourth walk issued by Kevin Gross. And we go to the top of the order and Len Dykstra, who is two for two. Lenny singled and scored in the first, single to center, stole a base, but was stranded at third in the second. He's three for seven in this series and has stolen four of the eight stolen bases that the Mets have so far this season. Shot. Schmidt picks it to Jeltz and back again to just get Dykstra on the double play. Nicely turned a 3-6-3 double play. Well, Mike Schmidt, a great fielding third baseman, hustles this one around in a hurry <laughs> as the Mets pick up the double play. That's the fastest double play of the year. <laughs> that had to be. Dykstra runs real well. Yeah, it had to be fast. <laughs> Not that fast, though. <laughs> it's one way to get him to speed it up. 
Wally Backman now with two out and nobody on. Wally's one for two. Single to right and was caught stealing in the first inning. Wally entered the game hitting 231 overall, but 333 left handed, and he hits one over Gary Maddox's head in center field. He may get three. He's going for it. And he's in there. Well, Wally gets his first extra base hit of the year, burning Gary Maddox, who is playing a shallow center field. And even though there were two men out, Wally takes a gamble of going for third base, and he just beats the tag by Rick Shue. Maddox gets the ball into the relay man, Steve Jeltz, and Jeltz makes a strong throw to third, just a shade off line. First extra base hit for Wally Backman. It brings up Keith Hernandez. Two out with Wally at third, and Keith takes high for ball one. Hernandez has walked both times. Two for seven in the series, hitting 318 against Philadelphia this year. into center field but Maddox on his horse can't come up with it another run is in and the Mets lead five to nothing as Hernandez picks up his third RBI of the year well a big two out base hit by Keith he jumps all over this fastball Gary Maddox a fine fielding center fielder can't get up to it. It's on the short hop. He knocks it down. Backman scores easy, easily from third. Hernandez with an RBI. And the Mets lead by a score of 5 0. Hernandez has now hit in five straight games. And here's Daryl Strawberry, who takes a fastball for strike one. Strawberry with a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the first. And he grounded the second on a very sharply hit ball to end the second inning. Breaking ball fouled off, and it's 0 2. You see the difference in Darrell's averages at home and away last season. Two strikes, two out, Hernandez at first. Boy, oh boy, that was some kind of. Lollipop curveball stayed high and it's one and two. I don't know why Schmidt is holding Hernandez. Good point. Big breaking ball laced into right for a base hit. Hernandez will stop at second as Wilson is on it in a hurry. And the Mets have runners at first and second with two out. Threw him that. Banana once too often. Carter has singled and scored and flied to center. He's three for eight in this series, and he entered the game hitting 381 against Philadelphia. The Mets with five runs on nine hits. Interesting pitch right there. You had to figure it was coming sooner or later as Dave Rucker begins to throw. Ball two. That was not done on purpose that time. Not that we can say it was done on purpose the first time, but it was a purpose pitch. It has been a rocky outing for Kevin Gross. He has allowed five earned runs on nine hits, struck out only one, and walked four through three and two thirds innings. fastball and it is now three and zero. Oh, and Carter takes a look at Bud Harrelson and I've got to think the green light is lit. 
John Felsky, the Philly manager. Rip and Rick Shue goes up to bring it down as Carter lines it. And Shue comes down with it. But the Mets pick up one run on three hits. And at the end of four, New York leads Philadelphia five to nothing. Now, here's a word from Manufacturers Hanover. American League. No score, bottom of the second. The Yankees playing against the Brewers in that ball game. It's Leary in the mound, ex-Met pitcher for the Brewers against Necro. That's Joe Necro, of course. No score, top of the first. Royals against the Blue Jays. Indians and Tigers were rained out. Red Sox four, the White Sox one, top of the sixth. Orioles one, Rangers nothing in the fourth. The Twins and Angels later on. Also the A's and Mariners are later on. Mike Schmidt to lead it off. As we go to the top half of the fifth inning, New York out in front five to nothing. Sid Fernandez allowed a single to Gary Reedus to lead off the ball game. Reedus was caught stealing. And Sid has retired every hitter since. Schmidt popped out in foul territory to Howard Johnson, the third baseman, his first time up. And he takes a ball outside. Shot but foul outside of third. So the count one and one. Spit has averaged a home run every 14.7 times at bat. That is fourth on the all time list. Two behind you. Babe Ruth, number one. I'm number two. And Harmon Killebrew is number three. Ruth did it every 11.76. He's way out in front. And the most home runs by a third baseman, Eddie Matthews with 481, Smith with 449. The fact that he's playing first base might keep that record away from him. That's true, because every game in which he hits a home run while playing first, doesn't count. One count in that record. In fact, Davey Johnson, the manager of the Mets, would be considered to have hit more home runs at second base than anybody, but he's in the tie with Rogers Hornsby. Johnson hit 43 home runs while playing for Atlanta. The one is a pinch hitter, so he and Hornsby hold the record for the most home runs by a second baseman in the season at 42. One and two to Schmidt. Just missed low and inside, two and two. Schmidt has some great observations. He said, Philadelphia is the only city where you, where you can experience the thrill of victory and the agony of reading about it the next day. <laughs> Philly fans are tough. And the Philly media has been tough. Smitty has hit 66 home runs against the Cubs. Bad by Howard Johnson and into left field. Joe backed up on that ball trying to go to his left to pick it but it had too much overspin. Now he's a victim of the overspin of the ball the top spin making that ball hop up and by at the last minute so Smith is on at first base and we'll see how it scored scored a base hit. Second hit for the Phillies. Schmidt on first with nobody out for Glenn Wilson who grounded to short his first time up. Wilson hitting under 200. And he drives one into right center field. Dykstra over and makes the diving catch. Well, you wonder whether or not Dykstra tripped as he went after this ball or whether he actually died for it. And that replay looked like he actually did die for it. Looked like he could have caught it staying up. Here it is again. Right here, it looks like he sort of trips. Good play though anyway and Dykstra hauls it in. He might have just lost his balance in reaching up for the ball. But the main thing is he did make the play. So Schmidt still at first with one out for John Russell. And a beautiful breaking ball for strike one. Russell struck out swinging to end the second inning. Those last two balls are hit off fastballs. The base hit and the line drive to right center caught. Went to the curveball in the first pitch to Russell. Got him to chase one there, and it's now 0 and 2. Russell is 0 for 4 in the series. In the series at Philadelphia against the Mets, he hit 364 against New York. And on three pitches, 
Russell goes back, striking out for the second time, the third K for Sid. Well, Sid struck out an average of 9.51 batters per nine innings last year, the best of the major leagues. Better even than the fellow that the Mets have named Dwight Gooden. So Schmidt is still at first, now with two out, and the batter Gary Maddox. He takes high for ball one. Gary Lee popped out to Hernandez in foul territory back in the third. One and one. Gary's been bothered by a sore back. Had a back operation last winter. Yep. And it really has still sort of tightened up on him from time to time. He was in Vietnam and he had a rash and he grew a beard and one of the first to wear a beard in the major leagues and if you excuse the expression it brought on a rash of beards in the major leagues. <laughs> but he still can't play for Cincinnati. <laughs> That's right. He couldn't play for them. <laughs> Two balls one strike. Just outside, three and one now. Sid has yet to walk a batter. And of course, that's all I had to say. Well, Sid walked seven and four and a third innings in his first start. Shortstop. And that is first walk in this yeah. ball game puts runners at first and second. The Mets leading five nothing, and it brings up Steve Jeltz and obviously a chance for a pinch hitter if the inning continues as the pitchers do up next. So Schmidt at second and Maddox at first, and Jeltz who is 0 for one. Good curveball from Fernandez for strike one. When you can walk a batter and follow it with a curveball on your first pitch to the next batter, it shows some maturity as a pitcher. And that's a big difference in Sid over the last year or so. Fastball right on the corner, and it's 0 and 2. He is more mature. He's still in his early 20s and still learning a lot about pitching. Mel Stottlemyre has been a tremendous help to me. One and two. That last shot of Fernandez holding the ball there could be a very strong tip off for the opposition. If you change the ball in your hand back there, the players can read it. You throw a fastball cross seam and throw a curveball with the seam, you can see it right out there. And you saw him change grip, go to the breaking ball, but he misses high, so it's two and two. Runners at first and second with two out. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Struck him out with a high fastball. Strikeout number four for Sid Fernandez. And the shutout remains intact as in the middle of the fifth inning, it is five to nothing New York. And we're back after this from Nissan. Going to the bottom half of the fifth inning here at Shea. With the Mets leading five to one, five to nothing. And there's the WOR TV box. Les Denier, one of the OR salespeople, and some people from RC Cola, one of our sponsors, attending the game in the OR box today. The Phillies have made some changes as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Greg Legg is into the game to play second base. And Luis Aguayo has moved over to shortstop with Jeltz leaving the game. And the new pitcher is Dave Rucker. And as we go to the bottom of the fifth, to call it for you, back in is Ralph Kiner. Okay, Rucker has worked three and two-thirds innings and has given up no earned runs. He's allowed two hits since starting the season. And he'll be pitching to Danny Heap, a left-hand batter. Dave Rucker on the mound. Bro 
Gross leaves after pitching four innings. He has been charged with five earned runs on nine hits. He struck out one, walked four, and gave up a home run, his second of the year. Andy Heap, the big hitting hero of the Mets here in today's ball game, a three-run home run in the first inning of Gray Gross. I should say Kevin Gross. And his first home run of the year. Put the Mets up by a score of four to nothing. They added one more run in the fourth inning. So Danny Heap, one for two to face Dave Rucker. Rucker last year won three and lost two for the Phillies with one save. He was in 39 games. He had three game starts, and in one of those game starts, he pitched a two-hitter against the Mets on June 11th. And the fastball fouled away. And he had seven home runs last year while hitting 280. So far this year, he's had three hits and seven times up and one home run. Rucker misses with a breaking ball. One ball, one strike. That's five runs and nine hits. The Phillies, no runs on two. Strike two, one and two. Danny playing in left field. Ground ball hit slowly to Greg Leg and the throw to first base for the out. What a name that is, Greg Leg. Well, has some alliteration to it at least. I like those great names. The curb score, early win. Those are now those are baseball names. You know, good fans are like a tenth man on the field to a team, and some of the best fans are right here in New York. So, Mets fans, for all you do, this bud's for you. I like the one, Jake Stryker, who was a pitcher. Early win. I mean, that's just, that has to be the quintessential baseball name, especially for a pitcher. Of course, you can't really get the win early. You have to wait till the game's over. And the first pitch to Howard Johnson hitting right handed against the left hander popped up to the catcher and Russell having a tough time with it but he puts it away. Ball was in fair territory. Shortstop. So two men away and that'll bring up Rafael Santana in the throes of a deep slump. He is 0 for 18 in his last 18 times up. Mets leading by a score of five nothing bottom half of the fifth inning. And ball one. Two and oh. Santana seems to have a very lazy swing at the ball lately Ralph he's not really swinging with authority not driving that bat through takes a strike two and one and for that reason he's hit a lot of lazy fly balls to right field Raphael hit 257 last year as a Mets regular shortstop did an outstanding job with the glove and that one he couldn't hit with a hockey stick <laughs> Two. Not even John Van Beesbrook's goalie stick. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. And Santana hits with two men out here in the fifth. Mets trying to pick up their third consecutive win. What did you try to do, Ralph, to get yourself out of a slump? Best thing to do is take batting practice and try and hit the ball right up the middle. Ground ball down to third. Backhanded by Shue, and the throw to first base gets him. So the slump continues. 0 for 19 for Santana. 1, 2, 3 inning for Rucker. The score at the end of five, the Mets five, and the Phillies nothing. Now here's a word from Budweiser. Well, we're going to the top of the sixth. The Mets leading by a score of five nothing. Final game of this series with the Philadelphia Phillies. 
Then it will be the Pittsburgh Pirates tomorrow night. Rick Aguilera on the mound for the Mets against Larry McWilliams. Aguilera 0 and 1 so far this year, as is McWilliams. Tuesday night, Bob Ojeda 1 and 0 will be going against Bob Kipper, who has a record of no wins and no losses, and the Mets go on the road. Plenty of seats available for those games with the Pittsburgh Pirates who are playing inspiring baseball. And we ought to remind you again as well that both those games will be on WOR TV Monday and Tuesday night at 730 and they're not on your original schedule and coming up tonight at 8 o'clock right here on WOR a parent's greatest fear a special presentation on child abuse too important to miss concerned family viewing is strongly urged. Well, Greg Lake, the lead off for Philadelphia. He came in the ball game when they made the pitching switch, was put in the ninth spot in the batting order. Lake making his first appearance at the plate for Philadelphia. Juan Samuel on the disabled list, so Greg Lake was brought up to fill out the roster to 24. Now batting for the first time. And he goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Keith Hernandez, the first baseman, puts it away. So one pitch, one away, and leg has no chance to leg one out. <laughs> there are some great possibilities with that name. Not near as good, though, as Steve Lake and Steve Trout with the Cubs and names like that. But I'm sure we'll think of some more before the season's I'm over. <laughs> we'll work on it a little bit in our <laughs> off hours. Here's Gary Reedus, who has one of the two hits given up by Sid Fernandez. Singled in the first, but was out stealing. Other base hit going to Mike Smith. A single just by third baseman Howard Johnson. Reedus one for two in this game. Fastball missed. With his base hit in the first inning, Reedus extended his hitting streak to nine consecutive ball games, tying his career high. Fouled it, so the count one and two. Looked like Fernandez took a little bit off that pitch. Didn't it though? Yeah, change up. Dropped down a little from the side. Pulled the string a bit. The old puppet pitch. <laughs> Ball got him again. Second time that Reedus has been struck out. The other time was on a curveball. And that's strikeout number five for Sid. So two men away, and the batter will be the shortstop, Luis Aguayo, who started the game playing second and moved the short when they made the pitching change. Aguayo 0 for 2. Mets have never had a no hitter thrown. Wow, spoiled a no hit bid by a Met pitcher with the only hit in 10 innings. Given up by Terry Leach. Terry brought back up from Tidewater to replace a man on the roster, Ed Lynch. Ed recovering from a knee operation. And speaking of Ed, we want to wish him the best as he is home on Long Island after being released from the hospital yesterday. Ooh, good fastball there. We just got some information that Sid is pitching at fastball speed, 88 miles an hour. His off speed pitch, 73. So good differential right there. It up on the first base side again. Keith Hernandez in fair territory, and the Phillies go in order. The score at the end of five and a half innings, the Mets five, Philadelphia nothing. Now, here's a word from Pure Later. Well, we're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Mets leading by a score of five nothing. And for the Mets, the leadoff batter will be Sid Fernandez. And this will be the third time in a row that Sid has led off an inning. He led off the second 
He led off the fourth, and now he's leading off the sixth. Not your quintessential leadoff hitter. Be sure to join Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers for action, glamour, and suspense. What more could you hope for? Weeknights at 6 on Heart to Heart, right here on Channel 9. So it'll be Sid Fernandez who walked his last time up to lead off the fourth inning, grounded out the short when he led off the second. And batting against Dave Rucker, and that's ball one. Rucker came in the game in the fifth inning, retired the Mets in order. Sid with one hit so far this year, he's one for three. One strike, one ball. He has pitched an outstanding game. He has only allowed three base runners, two singles, and a walk. And a swing and a miss on count one and two. Sid pitched a one hit ball game back against the Cubs last year, winning by a score of five to one. The one hit was in the third, a home run by Gary Matthews. That's his best pitching effort. Ball fouled away in the count, one ball and two strikes. Rucker's third appearance this year. Relieving Kevin Gross, the starting pitcher who worked the first four innings. Hard smash up the middle and Sid Fernandez with a base hit. So Sid coming through. Picking up a quickie here as the Mets start off here in the sixth. We'd like to remind you this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets, WRTV, and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WRTV is prohibited. Now Len Dykstra is stepping up. Len is two for three in today's ball game. Has hit in six consecutive games this year. Then he goes after the first pitch at strike one. Len singled and scored the first run of the ball game when he was driven in from third base on a sacrifice fly by Daryl Strawberry. One ball, one strike. Lenny has been on base in all seven games that he has played. He's played all but one of the Mets games so far. And he's also turned in some stellar defensive plays so far this year, one in this game. And the breaking ball is missed, one and two. Stan Isaacs of Newsday was in the booth earlier and had an interesting comment about Dykstra when he slid for the first time. He said, well, now it's an official game because Dykstra's uniform is dirty. And that's the way he played. He's a dirt player. Hard-nosed, aggressive type little ball player. This one grounded foul over to another hard-nosed, aggressive type ball player, Wally Backman, who's in the on-deck circle. Kind of seems strange for a small player like Dykstra to wear number four to me. Yeah, he used to those big guys. And some sluggers have worn that number. Including yourself. It went out the window when Gene Mock ended up with it. <laughs> There's a ground ball hit to the second baseman, Greg Leg. He throws to the shortstop. Aguayo, who was not on the bag at second, a bad throw by Leg, and all hands are safe. Well, I'm sure they're going to have to give Leg an error on the play because they had Fernandez at second. Aguayo had to jump up in the air and consequently left the bag. Now, a lot of times, the umpire will give you this as the neighborhood play, but the ball pulled Aguayo off the bag. And Schmidt wasn't even on first base, but Dykstra was past the bag by the time Schmidt got the ball. So an error should be charged. And is. Against the Phillies. And Leg will get it. So runners at first and second and no one out. And Wally back with the batter. Wally hitting from the right-hand side for the first time. is two for three in the game. Squares the bunt. Fernandez going for third. is thrown in the left field. Fernandez will score. And the Mets will lead by a score of six to nothing. 
a stolen base for Sid. Who to thunk it? And what in the world was he thinking about unless he just took off on a possible bunt play and didn't stop to see what was happening? Well, that'll be good for the rest of the day right there. Oh, boy. Sid will never stop talking about that one. It's another error as there will be an error charged on Russell on the throw out into left. But you'll have to give Fernandez a stolen base going to third. And a fine bunt. Backman throwing out at first base on the play and moving over to third base is Len Dykstra. So Dykstra at third base, the Mets leading 6 nothing. Here it is again. Well, Wally works very, very hard on his bunting, and he almost came up with a base hit here. Had he gotten that ball past Rucker, he would have been safe at first easily. But he does advance the runner over to third. And I'm sure they'll score that as a sacrifice, even though he was bunting for a base hit. That puts Keith Hernandez at the plate with one man out. The infield is now in, and strike one. Keith with a single and two walks in his three appearances today. The infield in all the way around. The Phillies obviously cannot afford to give up any more runs, as it's already six to nothing here in the sixth. And the breaking ball fouls strike one. One ball, one strike. Make that strike two. He singled in a run in the fourth inning when he drove in Backman, who had tripled. Base hit coming with two men out. One ball, two strikes. Keith with 91 RBIs last year. And he fouls off. The next delivery. Keith so far this year has had three runs batted in. He is, or at least last year was, the best in the National League at getting a runner home from third base with less than two out. He did it 80% of the time. Struck out. So Rucker picks up a big strikeout. His first since coming in the ball game. A sweeping breaking ball right across the plate. Keith a little bit behind it and unable to reach it. So now two men out. The infield drops back as Daryl Strawberry comes up. Darrell with an RBI and the sacrifice fly in the first has a game winning RBI at this point. He also has single. And strike one. Mets have seen a lot of left hand pitching and they will see a lot of left hand pitching. And it's a drive to center field a base hit. Thanks for scores and the Mets are leading seven to nothing as Strawberry gets his second RBI of the game. Well one of the reasons for batting Darrell fourth and Carter fifth today was to give Darrell an opportunity to get better pitches to hit. And so far in four at bats he hit a fly deep almost out of the park to the warning track for a sack fly to drive in a run in the first. He hit a rocket just like this only right at the second baseman Luis Aguayo in the second inning. And he is single to right and single to center as other two times up. So apparently it's working. And that brings up Gary Carter. He takes a strike. Carter batting fifth for only the second time in his major league career. I should say in his Met major league career. Has single in three appearances. This ball hit out to the corner in right center field. Long way back there and over the head of Wilson. Strawberry coming home. The throw to the plate is not in time. Strawberry scores, and the Mets lead eight to nothing as Carter gets an RBI and a two-base hit. Well, the Mets.
Mets are pounding the ball this afternoon, and the, this ball off the bat of Gary Carter just kept carrying and carrying and carrying. Wilson couldn't believe it when he got almost to the wall. The relay to the second baseman leg is the reason Strawberry scored. You see leg delay. He double pumped a little bit, took a couple of extra crow hops out there. Otherwise, they might have had Strawberry at the plate. Wilson with a fine arm makes a good relay, and look at leg. He takes a little too much time, and that hesitation allowed Strawberry to get past Russell. And now the batter, Danny Heap, and he takes a call strike. Danny with a three-run home run back in the first inning. His first home run of the season, and now the pitch back a ball. And it's one ball and one strike. The Mets now with eight runs on 12 hits. Five of the runs and nine of the hits against the starting pitcher Kevin Gross. The others against Rucker. And that ball gets away. Coming to third base is Carter and holding there. As the ball gets by the catcher, John Russell. This has not been a textbook game for the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, John Russell has really struggled back there at the plate. As you mentioned earlier, Ralph, he has not caught since he was a youngster. Basically, in his professional career, has played in the outfield or first base. He just didn't go out and get that ball, and I don't know how they're going to score it. Now, runner at third with two men out. Rucker still working from the set position, and the ball fouled off. Well, in the opening day game last year, Russell played first base for the Phillies. He made two errors in that game. The next day, he went to his manager, Felsky, and said, you mind if I play first base with the shin guards, chest protector, and mask? He got his wish, but he's now behind home plate. And that's strike three. That'll end the inning, but the Mets get three runs on just two hits. There was one error. One man left at third. The score at the end of six as Tim McCarver comes back in. The New York Mets eight. The Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Now here's a word from Michelob. The Mets are having a good time, as are the 38,000 or so on hand here at Shea today because New York leads Philadelphia eight to nothing. And we'll check out the National League scoreboard. In the top of the fourth, the Cubs have come back to lead the Pirates three to one. Bottom of the second, no score. St. Louis at Montreal. Top of the fourth, Los Angeles leads Atlanta six to two. Bottom of the third, Cincinnati leads Houston three to one. And on the West Coast later, it's San Diego at San Francisco. And as we go to the top of the seventh inning with everybody having a good time, a fellow who always has a good time, Tim McCarver. Well, I usually have a good time at a baseball game. I like baseball games. You and me both, partner. Yeah. Rick Shue leads it off here in the seventh. Eight to nothing, Met lead. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Shoe drove Danny Heap deep to left field his last time up. A long drive, but Danny made the catch. He's 0 for 2, and it's 0-2 on Rick Shue. Shue has hit both balls well. It's both, both of his times up. Uh -huh. Howard Johnson made a fine play to take a base hit away in the first inning. He does not hit this one well. Danny Heap's there again. And he makes the catch. Well, one out here in the seventh inning. The Phillies with only two hits and three base runners on the afternoon. Mike Schmidt, the batter, he's one for two. There's the Golden Gate Bridge. No, that's the Walt Our Whitman over oh, the Philadelphia. Walt, Walt Whitman, I see. <laughs> that's the one going from Philly to Jersey, that's right? That's right. That's the way the Phillies are going home tonight. <laughs> Bill Webb always tries to confuse me with these bridges. <laughs> That's a George Washington there. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and Mike fouls it back. You know, talking about a baseball game, I can't remember when I arrived at, of course, as a broadcaster, as a player, if I arrived at a ball game and I went 0 for 4, I did not leave any happier. But rarely do I see a ball game where I don't at least feel as good after the game's over. Hits it well down the right field line, but it's foul. So it's 0-2 to Mike Schmidt and 42,631 happy fans on hand today. 
Larry Anderson warming and he should be the pitcher in the seventh inning if the Phillies can get to the pitcher in this inning. That would be David Rucker who's batted batting eight. Schmidt did not hit that ball good. And it drives Dykstra to the middle of the warning track. You know, he kind of pushed the bat yep. at that ball. He did. He? he didn't really have a full cut, and he hit it 400 feet against what wind is blowing. Ooh, man. Strong. And a strong performance by Sid today. Glenn Wilson, the batter. Glenn 0 for 2. Glenn led the Phillies with RBIs last year, 102 times. Knocked in runs. And it's one and one. He's off to a tough start this year, mm -hmm. however. He's hitting about a buck 75 right now. Ground ball sharply, but there's Santana. And he throws him out. An easy inning, and now seven in a row retired by Fernandez who had earlier retired 11 in a row. After six and a half, it's eight to nothing New York. We want to remind you, and of course, I'm sure most of you Mets fans already know, that the 1986 season marks the silver anniversary of the New York Mets franchise. And to commemorate this landmark anniversary, the Mets have put together a sleek 25th anniversary book entitled, The New York Mets, The First Quarter Century. This book is a hardbound volume of the Mets history told in candid, action-packed color photographs and engaging essay compiled and written by noted baseball historian Donald Honig. So to get your copy of the Mets official 25th anniversary book, send a check or money order made payable to the New York Mets for $17.95 plus $3 for shipping and handling, a total of $20.95 to Promotion Graphics, Department L, 160 Barrick Street, New York, New York, 10013, and pick up your 25th anniversary book, The New York Mets, The First Quarter Century. And the Mets on their road to picking up their fifth game of the, or fifth win of the season, as Larry Anderson is in there for the Phillies now. And there is numbers. Larry Anderson, the third Philly pitcher of the day. Kevin Gross started the game, relieved in the fifth by David Rucker. And the Mets got five runs off Kevin Gross and three off Rucker. They lead eight to nothing. They have 12 hits. Sid Fernandez working on a brilliant two hitter today. And the Mets conclude their eight game homestand tomorrow and Tuesday night as those red hot Pittsburgh Pirates with R.J. Reynolds, Tony Pena, and Steve Kemp come to Shea. Game time for both games, 7.35. So come on out to Shea and cheer the Mets on tomorrow and Tuesday night before they go on their two-week road trip. Plenty of seats still available, so stop by any Ticketron outlet or call 718-507-TIXX for all ticket information. Here's the line on David Rucker. He went two innings, gave up three runs, all earned on three hits. He struck out two and walked none. So it hasn't made any difference so far who the Phillies have put out there. The Mets have been hitting the ball very well. Certainly their best offensive performance of the year thus far in game eight. Howard Johnson. Howard one for two. He has walked and single. Howard. Johnson. Those Pirates, winners of five in a row, losing to Chicago. And remember, Ralph Kiner will be on hand, as always, for the last 25 years, with Kiner's corner to update the scoreboard and have finals and games in progress, both leagues. And a special guest. And it looks like it's going to be a Met today. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. I think uh, you might look for that left-hander, number 50, to be at least one of the guests, Good the way shot. he's going. Uh -huh. Some games, it's just not too hard to figure out. <laughs> 
Good slider right there. And it's one and two to Howard Johnson. Larry Anderson, as Rusty Staub pointed out last week, likes to pitch left-handers inside. And that's a good pitch to make on, on Hojo, too, because he has really not yet proven to the National League pitchers that he can handle the good breaking ball, especially when it's inside. Hojo, another one who likes to extend those arms. Most left-handers are low ball hitters, and consequently, you like to pitch left low ball hitters inside because usually their bats are much slower than high ball hitters. They have a quicker bat to handle that high hard one. And Johnson can't handle a high hard one. And John Russell just throws one away, throwing the ball around the infield. And a little razzmatazz from the fans. I think he's working on his uh, throw to left field today. <laughs> Catch all the fun weeknights at 7 with Dick Clark and his special guest stars playing for big money on the $100,000 pyramid right here on Channel 9. Rafael Santana, the batter. Well, inflation has really set in. at $100,000 pyramid. Base hit for Santana. That's going to break an 0 for 20 streak. Oh, Santana off the snide. He's the runner there with one out, and the batter, Sid Fernandez. Fernandez. Steve, you're about seven years younger than I, George Foster. Kidding with Santana. And you probably don't remember the $64 question, do you? Yes, I do. On radio, do you? Yes, I do. I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. All right. And Fernandez not bunning. Want to know? <laughs> That's the 64. Who, is, say, who that? is that guy? <laughs> no, my my dad when I was very young made a crystal set for me. All right. 21. And I had it attached to the wall next to my bed with one little earphone that I used to have to hold against my ear. Didn't have a speaker or anything. And I would listen to the old radio shows when I was four and five years old. Huh. Fibber McGee and Molly, Inner Sanctum, Lights Out. <laughs> second hit of the day and 14th for the Mets. <laughs> Sid Fernandez hitting 400 on the year now is now the three for five. Len More importantly, he's been up four times. <laughs> That's right. He's been up four times in this game with a walk and two base hits. He's hitting 600. If you're up four times as a pitcher, something good, something good is happening in Lynn Dykstra the bat. Go ahead. Well, that's all. I just listened to that oh. show on, on radio, and I can remember that show, and then later it was on TV. Then it became the $64,000 question. Now we got $100,000 pyramids, million-dollar shows. Man. <laughs> oh, and one to Lynn Dykstra. Ground ball up the middle. Could be two. Greg Leg Aguayo got him. The second time in the game and probably in his career that Dykstra is grounded in to two double plays in one game. No runs, two hits. And Mets stranded a runner. And after seven, eight to nothing, New York. Here's a word from Manufacturer. Two hitter of his career. And ironically, the Philadelphia Phillies were the victim last September 24th. When he pitched a two hitter against them, he's got a two hitter going in this game and a comfortable eight nothing cushion. Sid has been in command, as evidenced by the fact that during his first outing, he walked seven in four and a third innings. Here, through the first seven innings, he has walked only one. And that was on a 3 2 pitch. Well, you see John Russell smiling. I guess you got to laugh to keep from crying. He has had a bad day. He has struck out twice. He threw one ball into left field as Fernandez scored back in the sixth inning. It's not a good day all the way around for John Russell. One and zero. There's Smoke Stewart continues to throw. He was up in the first inning, wasn't he? Well, one of the beauties of this game is that there is a tomorrow. 
Lots of them. 153 more after today, as a matter of fact, for the for the Mets. But then if the pennant races are tight and you get into the latter part of September, the phrase becomes, there's no tomorrow. There's no tomorrow. We have to win today. One and two to John Russell. Tell you, you have a bad day out there and there's no place to hide. Got to swallow it and take it like a man, and that's the way John's been taking his bad day today. That's two and two to John Russell. He has, as much as any hitter in the Philly lineup today, looked to be overmatched. He had just not been with it in any of his at bats so far. And there was a 3 2 pitch. I must have missed a ball somewhere, pal. I was with you. I thought it was two and two. Seven field up. Gary. Well, we were together, but Fred Brocklander, the home plate umpire, was not. Gary Maddox, the batter. That's the second walk given up by Fernandez, by the way, and only the fourth Philly base runner today. Gary Maddox drew the other walk. He's 0 for 1. Eight to nothing. New York on top. Four in the first. Big blow. Danny Heap's three-run homer as Greg Gross moves into the on-deck circle. Two and zero. Oh. Fernandez appears to be tired. Well, this is a pattern that Sid has had consistently throughout his young career, and that is he's had trouble finishing games. Speaking of patterns, we are both donning our new WOR jacket. My sleeves are a little bit too long. Though. I'll get this. Mine are a little too short, as usual, so maybe we have <laughs> each other's coats on. <laughs> no. Davey Johnson, Mel Stottlemyre. Three and zero. Oh. So I'm sure that will stir activity in the Philly bullpen. See? Make that the Met bullpen. I don't think that line goes to the Philly bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> one would hope not, anyway. There's a strike, three and one. As evidenced by Sid's inability to finish games, he has yet to pitch a shutout, which requires a complete game in his career. Fastball misses outside. So he's walked two to open up the eighth. Yeah, that's right. Last year, it was a seven to one two hitter that he won in Philadelphia. Here comes the pitching coach. You talk about a guy who could help a pitcher with control. But Mel Stottlemyre didn't walk any hitters. What a brilliant career he had. He was probably over a 10 year period consistently in the top five pitchers oh, yeah. in the American League. In, in and many of those years, right. the best. Mm -hmm. Roger McDowell. Roger McDowell's last appearance was Monday against the Cardinals. And that extra inning affair won by St. Louis. So the Phillies have two on, nobody out, and Greg Gross, the pinch hitter. Greg looking for his first hit. Two pinch hit appearances. He's 0 for 2. Greg Gross. This one drives him back away from the plate. Greg Leg is on deck, and it's 1 0 to Greg Gross, who may be taking. I think it'd be good policy to make Fernandez throw a strike in this situation. We'll see. And he is 1 1. Outfield shaded toward left field. Ooh, that was close. Two and one to Greg Gross. Fernandez with four strikeouts and three bases on balls. And that's the old cross seamer right there. 
That's why his ball takes off like that. Here comes another fastball. Ground ball to second. Could be two. There's one. Two double play. A four to six to three double play. And Fernandez still with that shutout alive. Santana smoothly at second base. Turning it over. Backman gets rid of it in a hurry here. Greg Gross runs pretty well. And boy, he gave him a good throw. Right about chest or shoulder high where Santana didn't have to do a whole lot with it in order to catch it and throw it almost in one motion. That is a very important point, too. Most double plays are completed because that second baseman or shortstop gives their buddies a good throw down there. Greg Leg popped up his first time up, and it's 2-0 to Greg. Second major league at bat for Greg Leg. I can't wait till he gets an infield hit. <laughs> That's easy, isn't it? Yeah. Three and out a leg. John Russell at third base, two outs, and the Mets with an eight to nothing lead here in the eight. Here's John, and there's a strike, three and one. Good cut, came up empty, three and two to Greg Leg. Well, Sid showed good velocity on that fastball. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and that's one reason he's had a problem finishing games is because he always does throw a lot of pitches. Swing and a miss, fifth strikeout for Fernandez. No runs, no hits, and no errors. John Russell remains at third. Fernandez has a shutout. His first of his major league career going into the bottom of the eighth. We'll be back after this word from Lincoln Mercury. Eighth, his third appearance of the season, and he's done well for the Phillies. Dave Stewart. He was 0-6 with the Texas Rangers last year, and he went to the Rangers a couple of years ago in the Rick Honeycutt trade back in the middle of August. Dave Smoke Stewart. Smoking in, Steve Zabriskie. Come on, pal. Thank you, Tim. Bottom of the eight, eight to nothing. New York leading. As we hit the four o'clock hour on the Eastern Coast. Wally Backman will lead it off. Wally's had a good day. Not only has he played his usual solid second base, but he's two for three with a single, a triple, and a run scored, and a successful sacrifice bunt. Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry to follow against Stewart. The Mets with eight runs on 14 hits, no errors. The Phillies, no runs, just two hits, and they have committed two errors. Wally, before the game, kidding around the clubhouse with him about not having played a lot recently. He asked me to let him know which direction to go when he gets out of the dugout. <laughs> So just head right just a little bit, not too far. Tim Tuffle has been playing because the Mets have been seeing a lot of left-handed starting pitching. Fastball fouled off, and it's one and one. McDowell still throwing for New York, just in case. Hit the center field. He hit one over Maddox's head earlier. Can Gary get there? No. It's off the wall again. And again. Nope. Backman thinks better of it this time. It looked like he was going to third, but he put on the brakes and went back to second. Two of the last three at bats, he's hit the ball over Maddox's head. Well, we've said it many times on this broadcast to the surprise of a few people. That Wally Backman, pound for pound, has as much power the other way as anybody we've seen. And two examples of it, his last three times at bat, he has had a triple and a double, both, that hit in the middle of the warning track in almost straightaway center field, which is an indication of how much power you got the other way, how you hit it to center field. That's right. And in some ballparks, both those would have been home runs. 
Hernandez takes a fastball tight for a strike. 0 and 1. Wrigley Field wind blowing out. You can book it. It's 4-10 here, and in a lot of parks, it's only 400. And those balls were within 10 feet of the wall mm -hmm. by five feet. Fouled away, and it's 0 and 2. So Wally with a great day, a single, double, triple. Steve Bedrosian up and throwing. Like John Felsky, the manager of the Phillies, trying to get his pitching straightened out today, but today was not a good day to do it. Mets continue to hit 15 hits now. Fouled off again. Hernandez is one for two. An RBI single to center in the fourth. He struck out in the sixth. He walked and scored back in the first. He has walked twice today. I guess unless Fred Brocklander said that Hernandez swung and that's what Hernandez is arguing about. Keith didn't think the ball was over the plate nor did he think he swung at it. But he's uh, out of there. I'll tell you, you know, at first seeing it we'll see on the replay but it appeared that he just went popped that top hand over a little bit too much. We'll see. Pitch looked inside. Now nope, he went too far. That's what it appeared. But I think what he was complaining about is I think Brock Lander called it a strike. That's what it appeared that. And that's the reason that if he had called it swinging, Keith wouldn't have said anything. That's right. Or at least get the appeal uh -huh. from the third base umpire. Strawberry swings and misses. Daryl's had a good day, as you see. A sacrifice fly for an RBI in the first, a single in the fourth and an RBI single and a run scored in the sixth. Two balls, one strike. Fastball and a good one. And the count now two and two. Stewart can bring it with the best of them, especially over a short period of time. Line foul out of play. And the count remains two and two. Back minute second, one out. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning with the Mets leading eight to nothing. And Stewart strikes out Strawberry. Two strikeouts in a row for Dave Stewart. Well, Strawberry didn't miss that pitch too often. That gives you an idea that late action of the fastball smoked Stewart. Gary Carter, as you see, hitting 344 now on the year with a two for four day so far. He singled and scored in the first. He doubled and drove in a run in the sixth inning. Gary with a seven game hitting streak. And a strike call. He has in that seven game hitting streak driven in eight runs and scored eight runs. Well, Dave Stewart was headed for the dugout, but Rocklander said no it missed Carter almost went too far himself on this one yes he did well that was close no appeal by John Russell to the first base umpire you never know 
That's low and away, and the count now two and two. Fastball hit on the ground hard. Aguayo bobbles. And still just does get Carter at first base. Of course, Gary not with great speed and laboring with that knee as well. So hit and one left here in the eighth for the Mets. And we will go to the ninth with New York still leading Philadelphia eight to nothing after this word from Newsday. Roger McDowell on to try to pick up the save. Well, he can't get a save. No, nope. no, nope. there are the numbers right there. His fourth appearance. He tied Jesse Roscoe for the club high in saves last year with 17. But he's taken up the slack here for Sid Fernandez. And what a job by Fernandez. He worked eight innings, gave up only two hits, no runs. Struck out six, walked three. And with an eight-run lead, we'll get his first victory of the year, one would assume, unless the Phillies can stage a minor miracle comeback here. Gary Ridas, the leadoff batter, will lead it off. Ridas is one for three, singled back in the first, and has struck out his other two times up. So McDowell with no record and no chance for a save on to pitch the ninth. And a good sinker missed for strike one. And Roger McDowell does have a good sinker. Well, our crack stat man, Jay Horowitz, in to tell us another piece of revealing information. And it's a good one, too. Roger McDowell and Sid Fernandez combined on two shutouts last year. The first against the Phillies on Fernandez's return to the big leagues, May 11th. Second one was against Atlanta. So that combination trying to repeat that feat. Reedus, as is his want, hits the ball in the air. Dykstra over in left center field. And there's one out here in the ninth inning. And that'll bring up Luis Aguayo. Aguayo 0 for 3. Started the game at second base and moved to short when a double switch was made and Leg was brought in to play second. Luis has lined out and popped out twice. Low for ball one. hitting under 100 for the year now. Also after a pretty slow start. Ball two. Half of the crowd of 42,000 still hanging in there with the Mets up by eight in the ninth. But the Mets fans had to enjoy themselves today. Yep. Well, you talk about some movement on a pitch. It's now two and two. This is that movement Steve was talking about, that late downward movement of that fastball. Big league sinker. Uh-oh. McDowell moved down, too, right down the mound. Looked like he might have hurt his knee, but apparently he's all right. Looked like he caught his spikes. Nope. Just lost his balance. I think he stepped too far to his left. Uh -huh. Timmy, probably and he probably did. stepped in the hole that uh, uh -huh. Sid Fernandez had made. Yep. You see that happen quite often when a right-hander follows a left-hander. There's another good sinker for strike three. And there are two out in the ninth inning. Shoot. See Aguayo swinging over that sinker. And you mentioned Rita's penchant for hitting a lot of fly balls, and that's probably indicative, indicative. If he can lift a sinker off Roger McDowell with the ball moving down, 
that much and he still hits the fly ball and he hits a lot of fly balls and he does and he sure does Rick shoe strike one now strike two Roger McDowell wasting no time shoe is 0 for 3 retired on a hot shot in the first inning by third baseman Howard Johnson and then fly to left his other two times up as the crowd gets up and Roger overthrew that one a little and it's now one and two the Mets trying to win their third game in a row move their record to five and three just did foul it off. The ball came up and hit Shue while he was still in the batter's box, so it is a foul ball. And it counts still one and two. That sinker again hits the top half of the ball and actually hit Shue when he was still there, as Steve said. Rick still looking for his first hit of the 86 season. 0 for 7 on the year. All at bats this year for Rick Shue have come against the Mets. One ball, two strikes. Roger McDowell closes the door in the ninth inning following a fine performance by Sid Fernandez to pick up his first victory of the year after going the first eight innings. The loser is starter Kevin Gross of Philadelphia who is 0-2 as the New York Mets win their third game in a row after losing three in a row to defeat the Philadelphia Phillies and sweep this series here at Shea with an eight to nothing victory here in the final game. Tim and I'll be right back to wrap it up for you. And as always, Ralph is standing by with Kiner's Corner. Stay with us. The Mets win at eight zip. And we're back at Shea after this for Michelob Light.